How's up, y'all? It's Crackles Poppin'. It's D-Boss here. I visit it by Dupli. It's titled, You're Not Crazy. Hip-Hop is Waking Up. Okay, someone sent me this, said I should check it out. Let's see what they're talking about. Let's watch. Is it just me, or is hip-hop waking up? These past couple years, the mainstream has been filled with nothing but copycats and shameless cash grabs. But it seems like we're finally turning a corner now. Drake is washed. Ice Spice is falling off. Ian is white. It's all. <laughs> Will hip hop revive itself or will it end up underground and culturally irrelevant? Yeah, like rock music? Well, you know, they say things go in cycles, and the fact of the matter is, we've been here before. If hip hop is dead and it's in a vulnerable state, what role did you play in it? The corporate side of the business, it killed it, you know what I'm saying? There's also, we got too much hustle in us because there's so much bread in a rap game that we kind of get lost in it. Every kind of music gets stagnant every once in a while, and then it comes to a point where it needs to be re-energized. And in a lot of ways, Nas was completely right. Wait, you he had watched hip hop <laughs> That is funny, he like, Ian is white. Like, what, what was the relevance in that? And you, what? Concrete in the 80s, <laughs> skyrocketing to the mainstream in the 90s, dominating sure the charts in the early yeah, 2000s, okay. only to be completely oversaturated just a couple of years later. Label executives holding all the power meant artists had less creative control over their output. Industry plants and one hit wonders were everywhere. I mean, in the late 2000s, you literally had artists that were making songs that exclusively served as cool ringtones and nothing else. It was a whole subgenre called ringtone rap. Okay, how's that for quality? Yeah, the labels pretty much figured out the formula. It took them a while, but they did. And then they milked it until there was nothing left but black eyed peas and B.O.B. I bet all of this sounds kind of familiar to you. That's pretty much the same state of oversaturation hip hop has been at these past couple years. But we know all of this already. The question is, will hip hop be able to pull itself up by its bootstraps like it did before? Well, in short, no. I mean, unfortunately, Soulja Boy can't save hip hop twice. And I'm actually being like semi-serious here. Hear me out. Despite how shitty his music was, at the time of his arrival, Soulja Boy was a sign of hope for hip hop. A symbol for young, independent artists all around the globe. Forecasting a future where rappers could independently cultivate an audience and pop off through the internet. The agency that came with platforms like that Piff, like SoundCloud, like YouTube, helped propel many young artists, many obscure artists into superstardom and built rap into eventually the most popular genre in the world. For a little while there, the internet took the labels out of the equation and put the power back in the artist's hands to create freely and grow organically. But again, unfortunately, after a while, labels figured out the formula and then they milked it until there was nothing left but Lil Mabu and... Okay, that's just bad enough on its own. And now we're at the point where labels are in complete like control of the radio, of every streaming service, every curated playlist, every algorithm. So if there's nothing that's gonna put the power back in the artist's hands anytime soon, what's gonna be hip hop saving race? Okay, so here's the thing, I kinda lied. It wasn't just Soulja Boy that kept hip hop going at the turn of the 2000s. It was one more thing. In reality, back then, the main source of innovation and artistry came from rappers putting other rappers on. You know, from the people that wish to see hip hop thrive as an art form and not just as a market. They laid the musical foundations and eventually empowered the artists that will go on to conquer hip hop in the 2010s. Whether we're talking about Jay-Z with J. Cole, Top Dog and Dr. Dre with Kendrick, who else? Lil Wayne with Nicki and Drake, um, Kanye with, with what's his name? Travis Scott, Kid Cudi, um, Big Sean, Chief Keef, um, damn, Pusha T, damn, Kanye did a lot, huh? The point I want to make is that the responsibility should be on the big artists. I mean, it shouldn't be on the big artists, but it is on the big artists to establish a foundation for the real talent to flourish. Because the A&Rs and label executives are not going to do it themselves, okay? I think that's pretty evident at this point. The people who are personally invested in hip hop are gonna have to carry its legacy. That's the reality of the situation. Which brings us back to today, where one artist has taken it upon himself to single-handedly push this rejuvenation 
into full force. Can you guess who it is? I mean, it's post-May 2024 and it's a YouTube video about rap music. Yeah, I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar and also Drake because why not? Bro, this whole like rap beef is such a cash cow. Do you know how many bands were made off this beat? I was like chilling, but other people were making bank off this beef. That's crazy. <laughs> I was actually about to waste this whole part of the vid talking about what's the dirt, but I actually thought about it and yeah, let me not do that. <laughs> Instead, I want to talk about that Watch the Party Die okay, single yeah. Kendrick dropped on his IG because everyone seemed to kind of brush over it. Bro, why did nobody catch that he was talking about Diddy in that song? I think it's pretty obvious, like even by the refrain, Watch the Party Die, like that's a very interesting choice of words. Who's the one celebrity you know to be synonymous with parties? He's the party guy. Also, how about the fact that the song came out literally just a couple days before Diddy got arrested? Listen, if this was done by days. anybody but Kendrick, I could see all of this being a coincidence, but bro, Kendrick doesn't do coincidences. The timing, the choice of words, the content matter, it's all very planned out and deliberate. And if he dropped on 9-11, does that very mean clear. he's insinuating that Diddy and Drake are the Twin Towers, and now they're both knocked down. Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave the egregious <laughs> reaching to what's the dirt. <laughs> he he is the best, after all. I think people oh. often get bogged down with the personal distance Why don't like between Kendrick and Drake, but I still don't think this beef was really Nah, but he was on some bullshit, though. I want to put the update with that. Kendrick I haven't even looked back into it. And Drake defending himself. Why do you think he set the beef up by saying, money, power, respect, the last one is better. See, it's a lot of goofies with a check. What Kendrick set out to prove, at least going off this verse, is that respect and substance beat numbers every single time. And because that's like the objective truth, the man succeeded with flying colors. Yeah, yeah, I think it's safe to say that message resonated with the audience, and a huge one at that. I mean, everyone was watching this beef go down. We've already seen it have its effect, not only on Drake's career, which has been nosediving ever since the hard part six, but also other artists careers which are cut from a similar uh, uninspired opportunistic cloth like for example i spice <laughs> whose album just flopped Not diabolically really. might i add and i see people wondering like why this is is it because she lost the weight and her ass is just not as fat anymore is it because people think she's mean <laughs> yeah people liked ice spice because of her personality that's why she was famous so you want to know why ice spice is falling off okay she brings nothing to the table. She's always just been here to ball out and have a good time. Which I think would be fine like a year ago, but with the aftermath of this beef, I think things are kind of different now. Kendrick has already exposed this money-hungry, cloud-chasing persona slash product to the masses, and I don't know. Shit like this may just not be that cool anymore. What the fuck is a jaddy anyway? I mean, just listen to Ice Spice talk about it. But, like, I'm just going with it. Like, those are six songs that I already made. So we pushing that right now. You know, fans gonna eat that up. Does that sound like somebody who cares about their fucking art? Who's passionate about the product they're making? No, that's someone who knows they're putting out garbage. They know what they're doing is trendy. And you give people like this a platform? Bro. This shit sucks. I don't give a fuck if you were getting lit post-pandemic 2022, 2021 era and everything was a fucking party. I don't give a shit. This is objectively ass and hollow and soulless. It's a soulless product. Whatever, bro. Whatever. The fans are gonna eat it up, you know? Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is, um, we're pretty much treading on new ground here. Like we've never seen a catalyst this strong in hip hop or any music genre for that matter. The effect this beef could have on culture is, is unprecedented. I mean, this, this may just be the beginning. See, because Kendrick's argument is not only a musical one, but also a cultural one. He believes that through his music, he can not only change the state of rap, but the state of the world as a whole. Change the idea of who the youth should be looking up to and what they should strive for. <laughs> Because look at Drake, the man has all the money in the world, all the numbers, and he's still fundamentally insecure. He's still unhappy with no real friends around him. He still can't help himself from incessantly lying and being an irresponsible adult at 37 years old. Just look at all the people defending Drake. They're all mirror images of him. Like, bro, you go on Twitter and you see these guys trying to defend Drake by making these comparisons. Drake did this 14 years ago, but when Drake does it, and they're just bad comparisons and they never make any sense, but they just keep coming back with the stupidest shit. 
and it's so annoying. And all of us see these Drake fans coping and think to ourselves, wow, they really can't see reason here. But really, I think it's much deeper than that. They feel attacked because Kendrick coming at Drake indirectly means Kendrick is coming at them. Since most of them share the same worldview as Drake and yearn for that same lifestyle. So they can't be critical in any way of Aubrey because that would require them looking inward and being critical of themselves. Mm. And they're just not going to do that. After all, it's much easier to believe a lie than to face the truth. So what should our expectations be for the future? The kind of renaissance I actually could see happening is not anything drastic. I mean, don't expect a return to like 90s levels of lyricism or Ghostface kill it to start charting again. The sound of hip-hop will still evolve as it's evolved up until this point. We just may see an increasing demand and appreciation for artists who actually care about their craft, who are passionate about making hip-hop music, regardless of how substantive or lyrical it is. The two examples I would like to use for this are uh, Travis Scott's Utopia and Yeet's 2093. Especially Yeet's album because it fell completely on deaf ears. I mean, when his fans were like shitting on him for that, I was heartbroken. Because it sounds like this nigga Yeet that made a 22 song album and half of them bitches were throwaways. And before y'all niggas get in my comments like talking about how I'm a TikTok fan and a TikTok listener, guess what, buddy? You can keep that shit because I am. You seriously just said you wanted TikTok music? That's, that's a problem. I've seen him somewhere before. You should be ashamed of yourself. Because you can really hear it in this album. Like, he put everything into this. All he had fun plan. making this project. He did it because he thought it was dope. He didn't calculate it on a whiteboard. Okay, how do we maximize market exposure? That means how do we good. revenue? Utilize social media trends to maximize exposure. Less people I being like strategic it. with their output. And more people being intuitive and, and passionate about their output. That's what I want to see more of. We've seen hip-hop become unrecognizable. Now it's time for those who care to take it back. Mm, interesting take. Um, I, I think that this might have had an effect on, you know, the hip hop industry to a certain degree, but I mean I feel like it's gonna be the same shit. I still feel like it's gonna be trash rappers dropping shit with very little substance and people gonna fuck with it if it sounds good. <laughs> so I don't think that's gonna change. Um, but it would be nice to get more of a balance. I hope this does encourage more people to push their pen a little harder and for you know the community to have more appreciation for dope lyricists you know that would be be nice because right now we, we don't have much of that and i mean if you do listen to that type of music you probably got to dig for it. it's a lot of underground artists i'm sure who are delivering in that area but as far as mainstream artists go we don't have a good balance so it would be nice if we can you know, even that out a bit, but we'll see what happens, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!